Hi there, today on Typical Books, I'm gonna do part nine on my bookshelf tour. Part nine. I believe there will be a 10th part because in this you'll see that I go through some of the stacks rather quickly. So if there's anything you want me to back up and pull out and dissect a little further, there's only a few books that I really pull out and talk about at length because I sort of go through this large bookshelf quickly, but there is a large stack of graphic novels that I just sort of gloss over. So I'm going to come back and revisit those. I'm going to talk about my V.C. Andrews shelf and the Anne Rice collection that you didn't get to see upstairs. So there will be one more final video that sort of just wraps up like these are the other random books in our house. But yeah, so part nine of bookshelf tour. But before I start there, the reason I'm doing the bookshelf tour video today is not only just to get it done, but because I don't really want to put anything in particular as far as new releases, books in particular, alongside political commentary of any sort. Not that it is 100% political when you're talking basic human rights. Black lives matter and black voices matter and that's what matters right now. So a nice bookshelf tour kind of goes hand in hand with that. What also goes even more hand in hand with that, no pun intended, is the Mudrathon. Every day at noon your time People have been completing a mudra to hold your hand up, right hand. Typically, you can also do this with your left hand and do another sigil, another mudra with your other hand, more of a yogic interpretation, depending on how you want to do this mudra has different interpretations. And of course, there's one that everybody knows. Uh, <laughs> the uh, mudra thon has been running for quite some time. It's as simple as hoping for strength against fear and peace. So check out Twitter, type in Mudrathon, hashtag Mudrathon, and check that out if you're interested for a more tangible and proactive thing to support. There is Horror Writers for Black Lives Matter. You can find that online as well. I'll put links below. I'll put a link to a Twitter Mudrathon hashtag as well. My personal favorite is the Southern Poverty Law Center. You can always donate to them. And that is a very fantastic group that tracks hate and does amazing statistical research that you can't find anywhere else. Now, there are times that the um, Southern Poverty Law Center may not agree 100% with what you have to say, but hey, they're doing everything that is right in the world right now and paying close attention to the things that really matter and the things that are very dangerous as far as human rights and equality are concerned. So without further ado, here is a small bookshelf tour. In fact, this bookshelf tour takes place upstairs. Okay, here we go. This is going to be awkward because this is a Billy bookshelf and it's uh, the top shelf and I am very short. So what you can't see above it is the uh, Ryuk pop figure. And if I can tilt this back a little bit, a Masters of Horror box set and uh, a box set of Shiki and wedding portrait. So it's a mix match here as well. We've got some mixed books, uh, William Burroughs Junkie, um, Boyd Rice Standing in Two Circles, uh, Tony Burgess, People Live Still in Cashtown Corners, and there's a second copy downstairs. We do share some of the same books uh, to a certain extent. Still Dead by Hart D. Fisher, a Dear Hamatashin book, which I believe there's one downstairs, Steve Tacklett's book. Now this is A Guardian for the Dreamer and Other Tales. He, if you had listened to my husband's podcast, Buy and Torture Cast, he was on older episodes. This is Voltaire's book, uh, What is Goth? If you follow him on YouTube, you may be into his gothic homemaking channel. Encyclopedia of Hell by Martin Olson. This is hilarious. I love this book. Uh, Vampire Nation. 
I had actually reviewed this book and talked about it when I talked about other vampire books. Vampire Encyclopedia. This is a very interesting book and it's, it covers a lot of the fiction. Uh, these are two books that I picked up last time we were in Allentown by a local author, Larry Dybert, and Werewolves in the Christmas City and the Christmas City Vampire. I've yet to read those. They are definitely on my TBR, but I might wait until it's Christmas to read them because they're based on Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, Dracula the Undead by Dacre Stoker, which goes along with this paperback copy of the exact same book, go figure. And The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. I, I really enjoyed that actually. This is Castle's Italian Dictionary, Vampire Taxonomy, which I really enjoy of all my vampire books. Manuela Dun Massetti's Vampire and Skull's Vampires, plural. And a family photo that is my great grandmother, Annie Lorena Storm and George Storm. And here we are, fourth floor, women's fashion. Milk glass, everyone, everyone has to have a little milk glass, don't they? Death Note, wonderful stuff. Some little Kinder Egg toys. Um, Kinder Eggs, as we know them here in Canada, are banned in the US, so this was a fun thing for us to do one day to pick up some Kinder Toy. There we go. Fun stuff. So Goth by Atsuichi, which is a very favorite of mine. Uh, Dissolving Classroom, Junji Ito. I think that's one of the few Ito that I've personally read. My husband is a big fan. I Love Halloween. You'll remember that from a previous video. Wonderful, <laughs> dark uh, manga there. Death Note. Uh, goes along with this. Uh, those were just picked up in the wild though, on a whim. Uh, Corpse Party, a wonderful series, beautiful series. My husband had lent those to me um, before, we, before he moved here. So it's nice to have everything uh, reunited once more. My uncle bought me this little guy and this is from Mock Chunk, Pennsylvania, or it's named after a sports guy, Jim Thorpe. I don't know how this is going to go because with my with my self in the way, some Nag Champa. No household is complete without it. This is a beautiful edition of The Shining by Stephen King. I can get it out of here. That my husband had picked up for me. It is absolutely wonderful. And I had laid it out on a, a round table one Christmas and read it over the winter. But this is just absolutely stunning. Signed by the artist. Just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Probably the nicest collector's edition of anything I've ever seen in my entire life. I believe this is from Subterranean. Signed by Stephen King. And it is copy number 431 of 750. Signed by the artist, Vincent Chong. And just, it's a lovely, lovely edition. Absolutely lovely. Okay. Cycle of the Werewolf by Stephen King. That is the old edition. I know it's been reissued. The Dark Tower by Stephen King. I picked this up for like a 50 cents or a dollar or something from a sharing book shelf at work. My husband has never read the series. One of my second cousins, my first cousin named his son. So my second cousin's name is named after Roland. Bizarre Bad Dreams, still haven't read this yet. I haven't read Revival either, but I really like the cover, but I had understood, like, this might not be for me. I don't know. We'll see if someday I do read it. Stephen King, The Mist. This is my husband's copy of the novella, and it is lovely to have. This is the book that uh, a lot of people didn't enjoy. Meh. It was, meh. It was, a, it was a short story. I will pretty much read anything that's this short. So it was interesting. Nice to see him writing again. This is my other favorite box set. This is the uh, Lovecraft box set and it does contain everything but his juvenilia. This is a very slim hardcover of The Inhuman Condition by Clyde Barker. This contains The Inhuman Condition, Body Politic, Revelations, Down Satan, and Age of Desire. This is a wonderful volumes one to three of Books of Blood. Ugh. Uh, I was glad to have married a fellow Barker fan. <laughs> the Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. 
This is the Toll, my husband's copy of the Toll, a wonderful addition to the Scarlet Gospels and Hellraiser, Hellbound Heart as a whole. You will recall this from a Halloween Athon. Scarlet Gospels, Mr. Be Gone. This is one of my most favorite. I've also reviewed, this is one of my older reviews, but uh, I love this particular book. And I had bought this on Guy Fox Day. Go figure. Just so weird that a book that begs you to burn it bought on Guy Fox Day. Uh, Luna Park, Brett Easton Ellis, Chuck Palahniuk, Fugitives and Refugees. We've got quite a bit of Chuck here, of course. Um, two copies of Invisible Monsters. That's my fault entirely. I picked it up not knowing that we already had it. Diary, which is one of my favorites and not a fan favorite of Palahniuk. Damned, which I enjoyed the first half of. Um, Haunted by Palahniuk. Let's see what Tiki Tag is in here. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Spooky, spooky. More Polynuk, Polynuk, Polynuk. Consider this, which I still need to read. One thing I find creepy, it's Nightmare Fuel, the cover of this. What the hell? That's scary looking stuff. But I'm very interested. I'd bought this for my husband, but of course he said that I ought to read it. I thought it would be more for the fan than the writer but it is a lot for writers. Pure Hate by Ralph James White. Now Nick and Mama Toss, I have not read this yet at all and I really need to. Edward Lee, I'm the big Edward Lee fan, huge Edward Lee fan here. The Black Train, otherwise known as Gast in the UK, fantastic. If you're new to Edward Lee and are turned off from the splatterpunk angle of him, this is a little more of an approachable book. The Black Train by Edward Lee. I love that book and I own two copies of it by accident but hey I do plan to reread that I love that book. Uh, Haunter of the Threshold by Edward Lee this is his take of course on an Howard Phillips Lovecraft story and Lucifer's Lottery this is another very approachable Edward Lee story that deals with HPL as well. And now I do like the Inferno series very very much from Edward Lee but of course if you're new to Edward Lee I would say maybe try Lucifer's Lottery and the Black Train first. If you're digging what's going on in Lucifer's Lottery, then go, go on to the City Infernal series. But if that's too much for you, then I don't know, try and find some of his uh, crime stories. Okay, this is a girthy mix right here. I think it'll take us a bit to go through this, so I'll move my camera out of the way. I will go through these another time. I was actually looking for these. I had mentioned them a while ago, and I need to brush up on my French. So you'll see there's two copies here of Genital Grinder by Ryan Harding. Um, those were uh, his and hers copies, and I don't mind having two copies of that. Edward Lee's Carnal Surgery in Mangled Meat, um, Ralph James White's Like Porno for Psychos and Bullet Through Your Face by Edward Lee. Wonderful stuff. This is uh, Despumation, a collection of metal horror and it is lovely. One of my friends, Sean, has a story in here, Sean Moreland, and it is based on the Canadian metal band Voivod. Wicked Library, I've mentioned that before. I have a story in here uh, called Grave Marginalia alongside 12 other authors and the wonderful artist Jeanette Andromeda and edited by Scarlet Algae and of course my favorite Nelson Piles and Dan Fortet from the Wicked Library in Ninth Story and The Lift of course. Great Horror Stories Battle Royale, Best New Horror 24 by Stephen Jones, uh, Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales, that's a wonderful book actually, and an old Oscar Wilde. We've got some Ellen Datlow's Horror of the Year here, Imaginarium 4, Fearful Symmetries, this is another Alan Datlow book, Into Pain Freak I had reviewed before so you can look at my video on that, John Skip Psychos, I should really review that sometime, that was a wonderful anthology about psychos, serial killers, depraved madmen, and the criminally insane, Madhouse. This is a beautiful book actually, it has beautiful illustrations and it is an anthology with many authors and it's all like a collective universe so all the authors were asked to write about this one same mental asylum. Madhouse is just a beautiful beautiful book. This came out around the same time as Gutted and I found so much hype over Gutted but not enough over Madhouse. Paperbacks from Hell, no stranger to that huh? and Cemetery Dance and uh, Joe Hill special issue. Let the Old Dreams Die, so we're into some Lindquist here and there is more Lindquist probably downstairs. This is the secret history of Twin Peaks. We're both big Twin Peaks fans in this house and 
This, I will be talking about Dreams from the Witch House um, shortly. I haven't had a chance to read it. I flipped through it a couple times just because it's so lovely, but I want to give it proper attention. So that's this shelf. So I'm just going to quickly hand bomb the shelf because it is just too low to the ground. Nightmares in the Sky, Stephen King. I talked about that on the show before. We've got Hag Head. This is the Canadian poet Susan Musgrave and Carol Evans does the illustrations. It is a Halloween inspired tale. A children's book to a certain extent. This picture is framed in my kitchen. This is The Lady Paranormal by Vincent Marcone, a huge dictionary. Everything you know about God is wrong, underground, and the Book of Lies, all from the Disinfo Corporation. Does anyone ever remember Disinfo? I used to love Disinfo. Basic history of art, textbooks. We've got the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Art of War, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, Nazi War on Cancer, and Beyond the Dark Veil, which was picked up at the Muter Museum. I absolutely love the Muter Museum. There's a postcard in there from them. But this is all Memento Mori. This is the Tolkien Companion, for those who need a Tolkien Companion, and uh, Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe. I've had this since I was a kid. This is a wonderful uh, Edgar Allan Poe book. I don't have the dust jacket and haven't for a long time, but yeah, absolutely love this book. I even wrote my name in it and stamped it with things when I was a kid. Go figure. Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies. This is a wonderful edition of Edgar Allan Poe that I've shown on the show before. And Mysteries of Witchcraft and the Elk Cult. If you're into those time lifestyle books, like this one here on ghosts, then you will probably be familiar with the Mysteries of Witchcraft and the Elk Cult. Um, this is a book, Monsters from the uh, Id. A Geiger compendium. Lovely stuff. Mr. Sangatide, we've got some Geiger and Del Toro. Uh, this is probably my favorite book on the entire planet to flip through. It is a massive, massive tome that doesn't fit anywhere else. It hardly fits here. This is true Norwegian black metal. It is a wonderful photo compendium. It is so big, I don't even know if I could properly show it off. Okay, so we are back and I hope you enjoyed that small bookshelf tour. Like I said, there's only one more video that's sort of a, uh, <laughs> I keep saying all my shelves are very miscellaneous and they are, but there'll be a few little bits that we still have to see in the final video. And that'll be a nice 10 part bookshelf tour done for now. And then I think I might color code these just for looks sake and for fun because I've never done it before. So I might have a little video of that little time lapse. I always like little time lapses. But until then, coming up next, we have my final ideas on House of Leaves because I am done reading that. So I'll save all that for that. I did take a few more videos of reading vlog. Thank you so much for enjoying the previous reading vlog, which did, it was very, very fun. And once I had the footage, I couldn't do anything but assemble it in the way that you see it now. So thank you very much for checking that out and being interested. If you've read House of Leaves, you can comment there here on the next video, which will be a more formal review with a little bit more reading vlog. So let me know what you thought of House of Leaves or if these videos have interested you enough to start reading it, if you put it off like I had. I'm reading Horror in the Woods as a nice relax. I also have Semen by Cece Adams coming up and Gutter Breed. So stay tuned for that. If there's anything that you think I should be reading, let me know in the comments and also let me know what you're reading right now. It doesn't even have to be horror. If you've taken this time to do a little more research, if you've got a stack like this of university textbooks on race and race relations, then let me know in the comments too. I'm always interested in nonfiction. Keep that in mind for future reference. And above all, make sure that you have a safe and ooky spooky day.